Hey everyone, it's Night Haro here, and today I have my ultimate tanking guide for you. So today I'm going to say some things that are a bit different than what you've probably heard. I have some different takes, some different ways of running your tank, and I think it might surprise some people. You know, I think oftentimes as in-game players, we can be guilty of kind of echoing what we've heard from other places because the game is so complex instead of figuring it out for ourselves. So today we're going to go ahead and run through those things. So with that, let's go ahead and start with some of the things that I think are going to be the most different from what I recommend from what others maybe recommend. So let's start with resistances. I know that, you know, whatever everybody has heard for so so long is that you know like Nord is the only way to go Nord is the best race to play as a tank etc etc I think Nords are great I think there's nothing wrong with Nords however you know the idea that you need to be a Nord to hit resistance cap is just it's just not correct it's wrong and there's a lot of different ways you can hit resistance cap without being a Nord but let me just show you the proof okay I thought about this for quite a while and I was like how do I break this down into an easily understandable and easily demonstrable way so that I can make this clear and what I can up with is to simply just add it up. So what I've done is provided you with a spreadsheet here and I'll link this down below or you know it's pretty simple you could obviously just copy it from the screen but you can add up here and figure out for yourself where you want to sacrifice things where you don't want to sacrifice things. So my idea here is that you would just be able to look at this and see okay well I need to be at 33,000 or a little bit over how do I do that and you can figure out what you want to take out and you know I could run through all this but I think it's fairly self-explanatory so I'll kind of just leave it here. Now for race. Uh, you know, for race, this is uh, maybe a little bit of a different take. You know, Nord gives you all those resistances, right? We looked at that earlier. That can be a great source of resistances. So, you know, nothing wrong with Nord. Totally feel free to go with that. But, you know, it can be boring having all tanks Nord. And again, we've already established, like, you don't absolutely have to do that. And for 99.99999% of tanks, it's never going to matter, right? Like, they're never going to get to, as long as you're at resistance cap and you figure out a way to do that, the opportunity cost of, of sacrificing one thing to, get, to make sure you're at resistance cap is just never going to matter. And, and I honestly question that it really matters at the top end because I can't notice a difference. So with that, you know, maybe going another race makes more sense. I certainly think for most tanks, probably going with being a red guard is probably the best idea. And the reason for that is red guards can recover stamina while holding block. Their adrenaline rush passive. Whenever you deal damage, you restore a thousand stamina. This effect can occur once every five seconds. That's pretty huge because we're always going to keep down our wall of elements, right? To keep our crush enchantment procced and that means we're getting the equivalent of 200 stamina back per second or 400 stamina recovery because recovery ticks once every two seconds okay that's crazy that's huge and so if you know most tanks you're just holding block trying to stay alive and so i think for most tanks as long as you find some other way of getting to resistance cap a red guard is probably the best way to go for most tanks now if you wanted to go with something else you want to make sure you have plenty of uh, magicka to cast spells i think a breton wouldn't be a bad way to go Bretons have a reduced cost of magical abilities by 7% as well as having an extra 130 magic of recovery. So that's that's pretty big, right? If you're just looking for pure magic of recovery, a Breton would be a good way to go. And then there's Argonians. So besides having a little bit of increased healing done, Argonians also have the resourceful passive. What that does, it gives you magic, stamina, and health whenever you drink a potion. Whether that's a tri-stat potion or not, any potion you drink will give you back 3,000 health, magic, and stamina when it's maxed out. And that's kind of nice because you can use trash bots as tri-stat potions so it's kind of like a, a poor man's tri-stat potion. And if you want to look at this and say, well, how do I compare this to other racial passives? I think the best way to do it is to figure out stamina and magicka per second. And you're looking at about 70 magicka and stamina per second that you get regardless of if you're blocking or not. So that can be kind of useful. Is it as good as some of the other recovery passives? No, but it works differently. So, you know, there's arguments to be made that actually it's, you know, in some ways better, right? Because it's burst and there's some, and there's arguments to be made that it is, that it's worse. So it's just different is, is what it comes down to. The other thing about choosing a race is if you have a favorite race, like th there's a couple of my channel members here, shout out to Mother Clucker, and he just loves Argonians, right? And so for Mother Clucker, he should just all Argonians, right? That's what all of his tanks should be. And that makes it really easy because if you if you throw a Nord in the mix, then you need different gear sets for your Nord character than you need for all of your other stuff. Or you just make sure that you're really over resistance cap on your Nord character and you're just at 
it with your other characters, which is totally fine, but it kind of defeats the whole purpose of choosing a Nord. So, you know, it's kind of like uh, either make them all Nords or make none of them Nords a little bit, because that way you don't have to have multiple different gear sets. <laughs> because once you get to like end game, if you, if you are looking towards that, that becomes more of a problem than anything else. So that's honestly like my blanket advice is just make them all the same race, either Nord or not Nord. And that'll make everything the most easy on you. Um, if you're choosing various like Breton versus Imperial versus whatever, some have better magic recovery, some have better stamina recovery, and then various classes also have better of those things. So you're probably going to need to swap things up anyways. And it, or, or just realize that like, hey, on my Breton Nightblade, I have stamina problems or whatever it happens to be. I'm, I'm picking that arbitrarily. So just keep that in mind. And then for Imperial, Imperials have a ability, Red Diamond, which reduces the cost of all of your abilities, Magicka, Stamina, Health by 6%. And so that makes them one of the best options as far as pure sustain. And sustain is really the thing that usually causes tanks to die is running out of resources or making mistakes to mechanics or what have you. But after like making mistakes to mechanics or missing a block, then it's resources that are going to be the main leading cause of death for tanks. So red diamond is really nice just because it, it does help with recovery some. But uh, but I think that's it for race. Again, uh, I would say for most new people, I think a red guard is probably the way to go. And and, uh, and I know that that is not what I've recommended in the past. I've just changed my thinking on it over time. And, you know, there's other ways to get to the resistance cap that I think make a lot more sense. The other thing is I'm a little bit more established as a creator and uh, and also have more experience in the game. And so I am more comfortable recommending something different than what other people recommend now than I was. And also, like, there, there was this problem with groupthink that being a smaller creator would only had, you know, a few hundred, you know, sub to the channel or whatever, and people would a lot more experience as they could, even though I could check the math and be like, Hey, I think this works. You know, they could just be like, well, what clears do you have? And so <laughs> I don't really have that problem anymore. So I apologize. Some of it is my thinking has evolved and some of it is now I uh, feel more comfortable and confident recommending something different than what is just the mainstream. We can move on and talk about the various traits on our gear as well as enchantments. So reinforced is probably the best bang for your buck as far as body pieces right now. And the thing about the armor traits is that really all of them are bad right now. So it's kind of like the in the land of the blind. <laughs> so reinforced to help you get to resistance cap is a great way to go. Typically you want to do that on everything but your gloves and your belt because that will provide you with the most benefit. Those other pieces don't have a lot of resistance to begin with even in heavy and so increasing them by some percent is not really doing as much for you. So in that case, you probably want to run something different, at least on those two pieces, but probably on some of your other pieces because you'll already be at resistance cap because it's not that hard to get to. So in that case, you want to run something else on those two pieces and maybe on some of your other pieces. So I personally recommend sturdy. And the reason I recommend sturdy is because it will reduce the cost of your block. And when I've compared this, checked logs and compared it to like Rakat hard mode and some other places and actually looked at logs, what I found is that sturdy is actually better than divines or at least as good in in those fights. Now on those fights, it's actually better, but those are kind of extreme cases. But my thought process here is that, you know, the reason most tanks die is by running out of resources and typically it's stamina to block or roll dodge. And so anything that can help you have more stamina, spend less stamina to block is probably going to be the thing that most likely keeps you alive. Now to compare that to divines, divines will let you cast one extra skill, magicka costing skill of about 2000 magicka once every 20 seconds, right? So that's not a lot, but is there a situation where being able to cast one more heal could keep you alive where not being able to cast that heal would not keep you alive. I think that's very possible. So there could be some benefit from divines. However, the situation I just mentioned is if you're wearing seven pieces of divines, okay, and running the Atro Mundus. And I don't think that that's very realistic. I think you're probably going to run a piece or two of, of reinforced. And so you're going to get even less benefit from that. And I think it is more likely that running sturdy will keep more people alive. Now there are some fights where sturdy is going to do very little for you. And so yeah, you could argue that running divines or something else would be better. But for me, again, the problem that I see is tanks being able to stay alive, most tanks being able to stay alive. And so I think being running sturdy is the way to go. The other thing is if you have Magicka, then having more Magicka doesn't really do anything for you, right? It doesn't let you cast, the, you have to be out of mana and only be able to cast it because you ran a bunch of Divines pieces. You know, so both of these traits, like they're both lackluster. Neither one of them is amazing and even reinforced doesn't provide you with that much resistances. So armor traits for tanks right now, I just don't think are that great. So if you're totally sold on 
on the running divines, absolutely go for it. But I personally would recommend sturdy. Now for enchants on the body. Now the, the quote unquote best thing to do would be to run something like prismatic defense. Prismatic defense enchants provide you with both magic, a stamina, and health. And if you look at these and you compare them to other enchantments that only provide one of those resources, you basically see that you get a free line. So if you combine the magic and stamina you get, you see basically get a line of free health, right? When compared to other enchantments. And so that's the benefit of running tristats. The thing is that they're crazy expensive right now, especially with the endless archive and people wanting more survivability. And so I absolutely do not think that this is make or break and they need to run this. The other thing, if you're going to run this, if you look at your enchants and you see the value that you have on your armor, all of those come from the exact same kind of enchant. So, it, you know, your chest piece will give you more value than your belt or your gloves, for example. So if you don't want to spend that much money, but you would like a few, throw it on your chest, throw it on your head, throw it on your pants, maybe. And that'll give you kind of the best bang for your buck. And, you know, this is something just like with divines and some of this other stuff, I would compare this to, to my experience in cycling. And what I would see is that there would be people who would go out and they would decide they're getting into cycling and they would spend sometimes thousands of extra dollars and sometimes way more than that, like <laughs> uh, closer to 10,000 extra dollars, right? To shave a few ounces off of their shoes because they got carbon fiber shoes or because of their shave a few ounces off their bike or whatever. And these are just everyday Joes that are 25 pounds overweight. And you know what? They would probably be much more benefited from just cycling more. They would be better at cycling. They would get in better shape and they would also lose weight. And they don't really need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to shape ounces off of their bike, right? The, the cost to benefit gets really crazy at the extremes. And I think that that's what you see with a lot of this stuff too. Just like going with divines or just like putting all prismatic defenses on all of your gear. Fine, do it if you want to. You know, it's, it's, it's your time. It's your goal to spend whatever you want to do with it. But it doesn't make a whole lot of like logical sense. There are probably better things to do that would work just fine for 99.9% .9 of people. You don't need to go pretend like you're a professional or to pretend like you're a score pusher if you're just, you know, trying to clear VSS hard mode for the first time. Anyways, <laughs> I'll put my soapbox up, but uh, but I just see so many people thinking that they need to do that. And then other people like pressuring people, oh, that's not best. You should do this, you know? And it's like, oh yeah, one skill cast every 20 seconds. Yeah, that's really gonna totally change the game in most situations. It's, it's, it's just not. So, <laughs> all right. So now let's go ahead and move on and talk about weapons and jewelry. So weapons and jewelry, there are actually some really good options here. And there are some that are much better than others. For our weapons, on our back bar, we always want an infused two-handed weapon, generally an ice staff, and then we want a crusher enchantment on that. That will help our group and optimize content to get to full penetration, which is the most valuable thing for increasing their DPS. And the reason we want to increase their DPS is because that makes everything easier. DPS is king and ESO makes everything easier, and so more DPS is always more better. And then on our front bar, you can really honestly run whatever you want. Like there are some better options, like running something that like charge is probably a, probably the best option. Running an infused, depending on what enchantment you're gonna run, might also be a very good option. But in general, I think you can kind of run whatever you want to on your front bar. I don't think that there's one absolute best way to go. You know, running something like decisive for a little bit extra ulti generation is also probably up there as like one of the top three traits you wanna run on your front bar. As far as which enchantment you wanna run, again, it's kind of up to you. You could run something like a weakening chant in some situations that could be beneficial. Probably makes more sense to have like a healer or somebody run it, but you could. You could also run a shielding enchant. You could run a stamina drain enchant. There are all kinds of things you could run on your front bar. I think it's a kind of choose your own adventure. And then of course, I mentioned in the resistance section, if you wanted to run a defensive trait on your front bar, that's not something I typically do. I usually get to resistance, resistance cap some other way, but you could absolutely do that to help you get to resistance cap. And then on enchantment, you know, take a look at them and, and choose for yourself. It's a choose your own adventure. For weapons and jewelry. So I personally recommend either running infused or harmony. Infused jewelry generally works the best if you're not getting a lot of synergies, if you're not in optimized content, if you're running pugs most of the time. Running something like infused will help you. Uh, you can change out your enchants with those. So it basically just increases the benefits of your enchants and then you can change those very easily. So if you find out that like you started out struggling with stamina, so you did some tristat reduced cost enchantments and then you realize, oh, you know what? I'm fine on stamina now that I can kind of heavy attack more. Or I, I learned to control it and I don't block as much. Then I can just change those enchantments to reduce magicka cost or something else. And that works really well. If you are in organized group content or you're going to be in it a lot, running something like harmony 
is really nice. Basically, whenever you use a Synergy, it gives you back more resources. This can be really, really nice in organized content. You do need to be careful that you're not spamming your Synergy so that you run out of them because they are on 20 second cooldowns. Some, some abilities share Synergy cooldowns, some don't. And knowing how that works is a little bit more complicated. It's outside of the scope of this video. But just realize that if you are new and you're like, well, you know, you said both of these are good. I don't know what to choose. I personally would either go with all infused or I would go with like two infused and one harmony to start out with. And just realize you might want to change that later on. And that's just kind of the cost. The other thing is you don't necessarily need to gold out your jewelry, especially when you're new. When you've played for a while, golding out your jewelry is no big deal. You probably recrafted it from perfected drops in, in trials. And so it doesn't cost you any mats at all. When you're new, it's very expensive and it's very hard to do. So just realize that until you're getting into hard modes, like you really don't need to gold out all your gear. And then for enchantments on these, you know, running something like reduced spell cost is personally what I like to do in most situations and for most of my gear. Having Tristat reduced cost will also reduce the cost of stamina and health abilities. I think that's also a good way to go. The thing is, you know, some of the, the builds that I see out there in the wild that are not good, the main problem that they have is they have too many stamina costing abilities on the bar. And I think that comes from creators recommending things they haven't actually tried very much. Uh, you want most of your skills to, on your bar to be magicka based. You don't want very many of them to be stamina costing skills, only a couple. And so typically having tri stat reduction doesn't really give you that much benefit because again, you shouldn't be using that many uh, stamina costing skills. The main exception to that is like vigor if you're running powerful assault. And then another option here that I didn't quite have room to put on the card, uh, having a, a piece or two of swift jewelry can be really nice. It is surprising how nice it is to be able to move quickly in a trial or dungeon as a tank. And so having a piece or two of swift jewelry, if you don't need the recovery, if you don't need the sustain is a great thing to have and can be really beneficial. And honestly, it's like a quality of a life thing. Uh, doing trash pulls, putting on a, a piece or two of swift jewelry is just, it's so nice. Or even putting on Ring of the Wild Hunt can be really nice for getting ahead of the group and for getting everything stacked before the, the DPS is there. And you have ads trying to kill your healer before you have a chance to taunt them. All right. And I think that is it for our traits here. Now let's go ahead and talk about our five piece sets. And I just want to point out that what five piece sets we wear and what traits we have, those are totally disjoint decisions that you need to make. Those are those are totally separate equations. So, you know, choosing what five piece set you wear and then choosing what traits you have on it, those are two totally separate things. You, generally speaking, will run the same traits no matter what five piece set you're wearing with very few exceptions. So uh, for our main tank gear, I recommend Sack Seal, Turning Tide, and Tremor Scale. Tremor Scale you want to use if your group does not have an Alkosh DPS. If you do have a DPS in the group wearing Alkosh, you could instead use Nazare or something else. If you need sustain, going with Engine Guardian is probably your best bet. You could also swap out Sax Leal for Pearlescent Ward. For off tank, I recommend Pearlescent Ward, Powerful Assault, and then either Nazare if your main tank is in Trimmer Scale, or again, you can kind of flex. A lot of groups still run in Kratos, and Kratos doesn't have that much of a DPS benefit, especially now that we're not running a bunch of DKs in group, but it's totally fine. You could also run something like Ulti Gen, like Baron Zadras, or if you're getting attacked a lot, Blood Spawn is also a good option. Now with this, you generally want to keep Turning Tide on your main tank and powerful assault on your off tank. And the reason for this is to proc turning tide, you need to be blocking and be attacked. And sometimes it's an off tank. You don't have anything attacking you. You're just kind of waiting for an ad to spawn or something. So having it on your main tank will be best for keeping up good uptimes. And then powerful assault has a smaller range and it also costs stamina. And if you're in a trial, you have to cast it twice to hit everybody in the group that needs it. And so that that's very stamina intensive. And so it's usually best to have on an off tank that has a little bit less responsibility. And it's probably going to be a little bit easier easier on their stamina sustain as well as being able to stand in group as oftentimes your main tank can't because they're being hit by AOEs and other attacks and they don't want to be standing right in the middle of the group. As far as Sax Leal and Pearlescent Ward, either tank can wear those sets. They're totally interchangeable. I know I have a lot of friends that prefer Pearlescent Ward on the main tank and Sax Leal on the off tank. It's kind of whatever you want to do. Both are fine. And then Tremor Scale to make sure you're at full penetration. You generally want that on your main tank because you do have to taunt to apply that debuff. And obviously, again, you don't want your off tank taunting the boss to be able to apply a debuff that wouldn't make any sense. I will also note that when you're in trash, powerful assault and sax leal can be of less utility. Pearlescent ward and turning tide still say just as strong, if not even stronger in the case of turning tide. So with sax leal, you know, the extension on the major force, a lot of times you don't need it. So it, it's not super helpful. It kind of depends on what the fights are like. For powerful assault, a lot of times, you know, you have to taunt four or five adds and then you finally get them in, in place. You need to place your wall of elements and maybe, in, <laughs> and then apply brittle and that you're like five or six GCDs in and things are starting to die at that point. And so proccing PA when everything is like half dead is not nearly as useful. So that is also a five piece set you could drop for something else. 
And personally, I would recommend something like Crimson Oaths Writhe, which will provide more breach in an AoE on your opponents, and that will help them die quicker and will proc faster than Powerful Assault. So those are in trash. Those are a couple of the sets I would drop. Similarly, Nazare is not really needed in trash because it increases the, the debuff duration, and all of the adds should be dead long before you need to increase the duration on your debuffs with any kind of even half optimized group. So again, you could drop that for something like Ring of the Wild Hunt so that you can gain a little bit of speed in trash. And uh, if you try it, um, you know, DPS have trash sets to help the group. Tanks, I feel like have trash set setups to help themselves because it just feels so much better. <laughs> Not having to sprint and barely moving any faster. All right, now let's move on and we're actually going to jump over and talk about our bars. And I'm going to give you generic bar setups, okay? Again, I have class guides here on the channel. Go look at those if you want something more in-depth and what you might run on some classes because it will differ from what I have here. This is a great one size fits all suggestion though. So first up here, we have low slash. Low slash will apply minor maim to our opponent, which will reduce their damage done by 5%. If you have a night blade or several other classes in the group, they will generally be providing that. So it doesn't really do a whole lot that way. But the morph we want to take here is heroic slash, which will provide us with minor heroism, which will provide us with a little bit of ulti gen. So that's kind of nice to have. It will also help keep up our weapon enchant. So generally this is like a ulti generating spot here. And then beneath that is exhilarating drain. This is from the vampiric skill line. This is a skill you don't necessarily be running as a main tank very often, or at least not until you've you're, you've got all the basics down and you're well beyond the place of just dying normally in, in whatever content you're in. So if you're dying at all, this is going to be one of the first skills people ask you to take off or stop using. But what this does is it drains the health of your opponent and it generates five ultimate per second for three seconds. So it heals you for 25% if you're missing health every second for three seconds while you're channeling, as well as giving you five ultimate. Now, the thing is, this is a channeled ability, so you cannot block cast while using this ability. You can, however, block to cancel the skill. And so if you see a heavy attack coming or something that's going to one shot you, you can't block to cancel the skill. But this is just a way of generating a bit more ultimate. And the fact that it heals you while you're draining usually makes it okay to do in trials as long as you're not about to get one shot by an opponent. I wouldn't use this in trash because you will miss some damage coming in. And it's usually better to just be holding block in most of those situations until you get even more advanced and more experienced in the given trial, more so than just not typically dying. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, please don't use this skill and die and be like, Nihar told me it was a good idea. I'm just pointing it here because it's an advanced thing that you might want to think about and work towards. Or if you're an off tank and you don't have anything else going on, it's a great way to be able to generate a lot of ultimate for the group so that you can use your ultimate more often. After that, our second skill here, we want some sort of class heal. And typically this is a burst heal. It's not always, but typically it is. Every class has one. Some of them are much better than others, but some sort of class heal is what you want to put here and use it early and often. After that, we have our taunt. If you're running sword and board, pierce armor is the way to go. It provides both major and minor breach. It is a melee taunt, so keep that in mind. If you want to use double ice staff, then you could use something like frost clench or the undaunted taunt. Typically nowadays, I almost only use frost clench just because I don't really find a reason to use the undaunted, but it will root certain enemies in place and that can be kind of annoying. Just realize that if you are using frost clench, you do need some source of both major and minor breach. Now, typically minor breach breach will be provided by our wall of elements on our back bar. And so we only need major breach. Oftentimes you'll have somebody in your group that will be providing that in an AOE, like a Necromancer or something else. But just realize if you don't, then you do need to apply that. And we'll talk about that more in a second. After that, our fourth spot here, you want some sort of class shield or survivability skill. So only about half the classes in the game have a class shield that they can use. Those notably are DK, Arcanist, Templar, and Sorcerer. Those are the four classes that have a class shield shield and the other three do not. So if you're playing one of those other classes, you'll typically put something else here for survivability. It might be something that reduces your damage. It might be something that heals you. It just depends on your particular class, what you use here. And then in our fifth spot, we have flare. This is from the PVP skill line. And what this does is it reduces our damage taken by 10% just by being on our bar. This is hard to unlock. I think you need like level seven in the assault skill line, but it provides us with major protection, which reduces our damage taken by 10%, which is pretty significant. So if you're in any hard hitting fight, I certainly recommend Flare. It's really nice because you don't need to cast it. You don't need to do anything. Just by being on our bar, it provides us with that 10%. The other thing is that we want this on our front bar. Our front bar is our damage mitigation bar. That, that's where we want to spend 80 to 90% of our time is on our front bar. Our back bar is for long duration skills typically. So we move to our back bar, we cast those long duration skills, and then we bar swap onto our front bar. And that's where we spend most of our time. Sometimes I've seen tanks putting Flare on their back bar. You don't want to do that. You shouldn't be spending that much time on your back bar. 
so it shouldn't generally matter. Only on certain extreme cases, but by that point, you don't need guides from me, and you'll be able to decide for yourself if you want it on both bars. And then for our ultimate on our front bar, I recommend Reviving Barrier. The reason we want this on our front bar is because it can be useful for a bit of survival, both for us and for our group. But the main reason we want it on our front bar is typically we won't even use it. Just by being on our front bar, though, it provides us, just like Flare, from passives, 10% increased magic or recovery just by being on our bar. And so that's why we like it here. You could also go with something like the Psychic Ultimate, which will provide you with minor protection. The reason I don't I don't recommend that here is because, one, you can get from minor protection depending on what class you're on. Like half of the classes have a source of minor protection that they will already have, so it won't benefit them. And then the other reason is like, yes, you can use it actively to kind of spare your life, but I think that's so advanced that usually if you need that, you don't need it. You know what I mean? It's just very rare that you would recognize that you're about to die and know that you need to use it. Typically, you could just avoid that situation of being about to die. And then you also have to level up the Psychic skill line and other reasons. I'm not saying it's a bad skill or it's a bad idea. I'm just saying it's not something I'm comfortable recommending. Now, moving on to our back bar, we have our Wall of Elements. Wall of Elements will help us keep down our Crusher back bar enchant. And we always want that down. So one of the first things you do on an opponent is put down your Wall of Elements. I will note that it will only applies to one target. So putting down your wall of elements will not apply a crusher to several targets, but it will be useful for applying that minor breach, especially if we're using double eye staffs. Also, if you're on trash, you can use wall of elements with pulsar to root enemies in place and particularly in dungeons. Most trial mobs are immune to being rooted. I, you know, sure it's cool, but like most of the time I, I don't find I need to do that in dungeons because most of the mobs die so quickly. So yeah, it's a nice to have, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal because most the mobs are going to die so fast. Our second skill here, I recommend some sort of class survival buff. You know, each class has different ones. If you're on an Necromancer, this would be your Spirit Mender. If you're on a Nightblade, this could be one of several abilities, but some sort of tanking survival skill is what I would put here. And then for our third spot, we have our either our back bar, Range Taunt, which again, I have Frost Clinch. You could also use Inner Fire, Inner Rage from the Undaunted skill line if you wanted. Although again, typically I just recommend using Frost Clinch. A lot of people think Frost Clinch has a shorter range if you actually equip a eye staff, you'll see that the range that it shows on the tooltip goes up. Alternatively, if we're running frost clinch on our front bar because we're doing double eye staffs, then what I recommend is running elemental susceptibility. Now, this is much harder to only have a taunt on one bar, but elemental susceptibility, especially with double eye staffs, will help us keep up minor brittle because what it does is it applies all three status effects once every seven seconds. If you have a couple people in your group running this setup with a double eye staff and elemental susceptibility, you'll end up with basically 100% brittle uptime. I was skeptical of this and I had a few friends show me logs and uh, Drakiris and Miles in particular and I became convinced of it. So I am a believer now. Uh, you can just run elemental susceptibility. Again, realize you only have one taunt on your front bar so that can be a little bit tricky if you get used to being able to taunt on both bars. And then after that, we need some source of major resolve. We kind of talked about this already, but to make sure that we are resistance cap, we should always have a source of major resolve. Every class has one. Night Blades are the one class that's a little bit different they get theirs from a passive. I have a Nightblade video. Go check that out if you're curious about it. If you don't want to use your class skill, then balance is also a really good way to go. This is from the Mage's Guild skill line. It costs health and gives you back Magicka, which can be really nice for your Magicka sustain. And it also provides you with a major resolve. It's a little hard to unlock. And sometimes there's a reason you want to run your class source of major resolve. So just realize that like on a Templar, on a Warden, I typically prefer my class source of major resolve. And honestly, unlocking the Mage's Guild skill line is kind of annoying and not something that I do in all my characters. So it, it's totally fine to just run your class source of major resolve. For the longest time, people used to just, you know, rant and rave and just like swear that like balance was the best skill and the only skill you should use for this. Part of it is that skills have changed and part of it is that, you know, the thinking has changed. And so, uh, yeah, uh, balance is not all, the end all be all. Although don't get me wrong, it can be extremely nice in certain situations. And then our last skill here, this is still a flex spot, even though I don't have anything specific underneath this. This is Overflowing Altar, and I mostly put this here for dungeons because sometimes you don't have a healer or you have a fake healer. So having Overflowing Altar provides a little bit of heal. Your, your group can use a synergy to heal themselves for 60% of their max health, which is huge and can save them from dying. The other thing is it's a synergy and you could hit those really quickly and usually get them off like a second or two before anybody could actually heal someone unless they were kind of proactively spamming heals. So Overflowing Altar is a great choice, but this is a flex spot. You could put anything else here. And then our last skill on a bar is going to be a 
aggressive warhorn the reason we want to use this most often is because it increases our dps it increases it in two ways one is it increases your max resources which gives you the equivalent of weapon and spell damage and then the other thing it does is it provides your group with major force which increases their critical damage by 20 percent for 10 seconds and then if you pair this with sax leal and pair it with some of the other stuff you'll get these really big dps windows sax leal gives you major force for longer that's why we run that set and in group content especially optimized trial content this will give you over 10 percent increased damage for your group it's 20 percent critical damage but if they're not at cap it's going to give them the you know over the equivalent of, of 10 percent damage closer to 15 again in an optimized group and damage makes everything easier damage may let you get through mechanics faster and have to do less mechanics and you know quite well as a tank that if you take an unblocked heavy if you make one mistake then you're going to die and usually if you die everybody else dies and so the quicker a fight goes the easier it is on you any tank that's been in an extremely long pull with very low dps is very well of this fact so that's why we like more dps and eso and why it's so important and why you want to run aggressive warhorn as opposed to like some selfish ultimate that will only help you for a short period of time and will cause the fights to be much more delayed and longer than they need to be all right now let's move on and talk about some of our flex skills here so first up i have circle of protection this is mostly used in situationally to help your group it provides minor protection as well as a bit of a heal over time it's not something i would typically use to keep yourself alive it's something typically you use to provide your group with minor protection and it's situationally very useful after that we have vigor i personally recommend resolving vigor which provides us with minor resolve for 20 seconds as well as a pretty decent heal over a short period of time so it's kind of nice if you need an extra heal over time and if you don't have an, a source of minor resolve i.e you're outside of the group so you're not getting hit by combat prayer most of the time or you don't have some other source class source of minor resolve you could also run echoing vigor in dungeons if you don't have a healer you know you as a tank you're not going to be able to provide the group with a lot of heals but any little bit helps in that situation and so you might want to still have the other morph after that is race against time race against time is an amazing skill so some classes have a source of snare reduction that removes snares from them night blades and wardens come to mind and some classes have a source of major expedition and some classes don't so race against time is from the psychic skill line so anybody can unlock it it will take off all snares on you so any kind of slowing effects it will remove and it'll also give you major expedition this can be really nice on classes that don't have their own sources like a necromancer for example and in certain fights like in cloud rest if you're trying to run from point a to point b or in halls of fabrication particularly on the trash and there's various snares and stuff like that so race against time can be really nice the triplets fight there's plenty of other places where race against time can be really nice being able to move fast and being able to remove snares as a tank is just highly valuable and then after that we have pulsar this is a great way if you're using a frost staff of applying minor brittle in an aoe so this is most useful in trash a lot of times you know in trash i'll stay on my back bar more if i'm running a sword and board in my front bar or you can just put it on your front bar if you're running double eye staff and hitting this will reduce the health of some of the really small ads that die pretty quickly which can help proc various status effects and various 5p sets to increase damage but also just applying the minor brittle is also pretty significant and helpful for your group to get through those trash packs quickly after that we have defensive posture and actually both morphs of this skill are useful defensive stance will provide you with an extra 10 percent block mitigation and a 10 percent reduced cost of block which can be nice passively in certain fights we're holding block a lot such as rakat in maul of lorkaj or veteran rock rove zalvaka whenever you're taking those heavies obviously ideally you dodge and zalvaka you want to dodge some of those but sometimes you just need to hold block through most of them so defensive stance can be really nice for that it's also used in veteran sunspire and locusties to reflect the missile attacks if you're range tanking and then absorb missile is the other morph and that's typically used in cloud rest if you're on a class that doesn't have a really good class shield to help mitigate the damage from the heavy attack by zamaja that big orb that she gets shot at you it actually counts as a missile and you can't reflect it back at her so absorb missile is the way to go there you do want to be careful that you don't run out of stamina though using the skill so you kind of want to be careful with this so defensive stance you usually just use passively with locusties being the one fight where that's kind of an exception and then absorb missile is one you would use more actively but having both morphs is not a bad idea i just didn't have room to put everything on here and then we have razor caltrops razor caltrops is particularly if you are on a double eye staff build is a great way to apply major breach some classes have a source of major breach and that's typically better to use but if you don't have one this is from the pvp skill line and it's a it's a great way to do it it also will slow your opponents a lot of people really find this useful and helpful in dungeons i don't think it's bad i think it's good you can throw it down earlier or whatever uh it's just like optimizing for dungeons most of the time i don't really feel like is that necessary
necessary is kind of the issue that I have. Um, well, I don't think it's like that that crucially important, but it is a really nice to have quality of life skill. And then we have efficient purge. This is a skill that is very situational, but it's incredibly important to have and have morphed and leveled up. So purge whenever you need it. This purges in an AOE around you, several people. However, the base morph costs like 8,000 Magicka. So you can cast this like twice until you run out of Magicka. If you take the morph efficient purge and then you make sure it's leveled all the way up, it reduces it down to like 4,500. So it almost reduces it by 50%, which allows you to cast it many more times. You don't need this very often, but when you do need it, it's pretty crucial. So it's a good skill to have and have leveled up. And then last up here, I have Silver Leash, uh, which probably deserves to be someplace a little bit more prominent. You sometimes need to be able to chain in ads and not every class has a, a chain. And so Silver Leash is the way to go on those classes. It does cost stamina, which can be very problematic in certain fights, most notably Veteran Rock Grove on the first boss where you have all those frogs you have to chain in depending on what class you're on. So just realize uh, it does cost stamina. You do need to be careful not putting too many stamina costing skills on your bar, but whenever you need it, it's absolutely crucial. And now with the recent changes, if someone doesn't have taunt on them, just chaining them in will taunt them to you. And I think that's it for skills. Now let's move on and talk about CP. So for blue CP, I recommend Duelist Rebuff, Enduring Resolved, and Ironclad. And the reason I recommend those three, generally they don't leave my bar, is because direct damage and single target damage comes from heavy attacks. And then damage over time, there's very few ways to mitigate that kind of damage. It cannot be blocked. Blocking damage over time doesn't do anything. And so you have to rely on buffs and passive damage mitigation. And so these are the three CP that I typically don't ever change out. And then after that, if you need more resistances, I think Bulwark is a great way to go. Basically the fourth spot here, there's not a great option. I've recommended and talked about some things before, but I think it's kind of a choose your own adventure if you don't want to go with Bulwark. Whatever sounds good to you, I think is probably fine. I plan on doing a full on CP video in the not too distant future. So I'll go over, you know, other options and go over this a little bit more in depth at that time. But again, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. For a slottable red CP, I recommend Fortified, Celerity, Expert Evasion, Rejuvenation, and then as another one, Slippery is also very useful situationally. So Fortified will increase our armor if we need it. If we don't need it, obviously you can take it off. Celerity gives you an extra 10% speed while in combat. Again, on a tank, being faster is always better. So it's really nice. It's just a convenience thing, if nothing else. Expert Evasion gives us a free roll dodge once every 30 seconds. That's huge. This has saved my life so many times. I never take Expert Evasion off my bar, even when I don't need it. I know I'll want it soon or on the next fight. And so I just never change it out. And then Rejuvenation provides us with a bit of recovery. It's not that much, but you know, every little bit helps. And then of course, Slippery. Slippery will allow you to break free. It does it automatically and it doesn't cost anything once every, I think, 22 seconds. And that can be really nice on certain fights. I mentioned earlier, Rakat, that's one where they constantly CC. You have to break free and then block a heavy attack. There's plenty of other places where this is used, but Slippery is a good fifth option. But with the red CP, it really is a choose your own adventure. There's no real wrong option, just whatever you think is best. And then for our points, I recommend putting 64 points in health. It's just the easiest thing to do. Typically on a tank, you want to aim for about 40,000 health or a little bit more. Some classes that don't have a shield, typically you want a little bit more health, like 41 or 42,000, particularly on classes like an Acromancer that already give you extra health. Similarly with a Nightblade, having more health is better. And then if you're going into hard modes, you want to bump that up to about 45k or again, a little bit more if you're on some of those classes. But typically that's not too hard to get to. Just make sure you're not running all health enchants on your tank because you'll end up with a crazy high amount of health and you really just don't need that much health. It can actually cause problems on certain fights where the damage scales off your health. So that's why you don't want to go too overboard. And then of course, I recommend the Atronach Mundus. This provides us with magic recovery, which is what we normally need. Obviously you can't recover stamina while holding block. So having magic recovery is kind of the best thing to do typically. And then if you're having a lot of problems with recovery, running a sword and board and heavy attacking is the best way to get back stamina. So Atro is usually the way to go. You could run other Munduses in certain situations. That's up to you. Like having the Steed and Cloud Rest for extra speed can be nice. And there are other reasons to run other uh, Munduses. If you really wanted to, you could run like, you know, you could run the one that gives you more resistances. I just typically wouldn't recommend that because I don't think it's needed. And then for our food, I recommend something like Jewels of Misrule or Zaga's Red Frothgar. Jewels of Misrule will increase your max health by about 4,000 and then it gives you stamina and magic of recovery. There's also Orzaga's Smoked Bear Haunch, which is a little bit better version of Jewels of Misrule. It's just a little bit more expensive. Jewels of Misrule recipe drops from the Jester's event and then the Orzaga's Smoked Bear Haunch is, is from a quest, so you can actually just go and lock that. Again, either one of these is fine. Orzaga's Red Frothgar gives you pure magic of recovery and max health. It doesn't give you any 
stamina recovery. I think that's okay to run, but a lot of times you'll want the extra stamina recovery just to make sure you don't run out, especially if you're new. So, you know, any any three of those options I think are all fine. For potions, you want tristat potions or essence of health that give you tristat recovery. So you want something that gives you magicka, stamina, and health, and it'll also increase those recoveries by 40%. That's what you always want to run on a tank. You also want to make sure that you have three points into the alchemy skill line under medicinal use. You will need to level up your alchemy skill line, but make sure you have three points always in medicinal use and you can take the rest out once you've leveled that skill line up. And that'll make sure that these tristat potions, the recovery portion of them lasts for 45 seconds, which is the potion cooldown. So if you want, you can always have up the extra recovery, but I typically will only drink potions when I need them. I typically don't drink them off of cooldown. And then I just uh, put here as a reminder that the resistance cap is about 33,000. You will usually want to go a little bit over that. Okay. Uh, if you're in any kind of hard hitting fight or anything like that. And I think that's it for today, man. That was a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I went over everything. Hopefully I was clear. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below or come by the that was in the boss discord server. If you found this helpful, consider becoming a channel member. I think you can become a channel member for as little as a dollar and it just helps the channel out as a way of supporting me, helping me make more content like this. And it's a huge help as I'm trying to do this full time. Anyways, that's it for today. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you in the next one.